Hello everyone, this is going to be a bit weird, but I think I'm just going to do a voiceover for this video. I think it's going to be a lot more informative rather than just music over the top. So I'm basically going to just talk about what's going on, what I was doing, anything I was doing correctly, anything I was doing wrong, any mistakes I made, um, and what should be done, um, basically, on the lesson brief. I think it's going to be a lot more beneficial to a lot more people, as uh, it'll give everyone an idea, um, FTA students and other students, as well as just normal people, what the... Uh, sort of layout for our lessons are and especially an insight into the asymmetric circuits lesson so uh, i'm going to talk in a minute and then i'll catch you back when we're taxiing all right guys walk around's done i'm just going to head in now brief with uh, tom we've got asymmetric circuits today um, and this is the last flight i've got before i do my CPL mocks so uh, yeah hopefully it goes well um, again probably won't be any uh, sound over this video um, but I'll put some music over and, and the, the, the flight should be quite interesting because um, it's going to be constant uh, doing things rather than just cruising um, but yeah I'll catch you when we're in the air cheers okay so at the moment I'm just carrying out the taxi check so I'm doing a right turn onto the taxiway and then a, a left turn here just to check that all the instruments are working correctly just in case we were to have a failure of our primary flight display or um, an inadvertent entrance into uh, IMC conditions and then a failure of our display as well so we need to make sure the compass and the AI is uh, indicated correctly. Okay, so the uh, left hand seat take off from the right? Uh, conditions, the runway is slightly damp but it shouldn't affect the performance at all and the wind is calm. Should be a engine failure, um, below rotate speed, 72 knots for the bolt to take off, above rotate speed but below take off safety speed, which is 75 knots for the take off, above take off safety speed, we have an engine failure and then see what's set up with the aircraft is climbing, if it is we'll climb straight ahead to circuit high, carry out the necessary drills and contacting air traffic control. Should we uh, not have to climb towards, so we'll consider an off-field landing, which in this direction will most likely be the beach, just off the coast. Uh, that would be the clearest area. There uh, shouldn't be any threats really apart from the fact that we are um, simulating our asymmetric conditions so we'll keep a really good eye on the engine temperature and pressures and the circuit is quite busy as you can hear on the radio. Do you have any questions at all? Uh, no. So for the first circuit, the normal left hand, both engines yeah. touching there. Sure. Okay. So I hope that you could hear that well enough. That was the captain's brief. I was basically talking about what would we do in the event of emergency. Um, here we're just lining up to the runway, carrying out the ATPL check. So that's that the approach is clear, that the transponder is set to ground mode, which means that the transponder will automatically activate as we begin the takeoff roll. And the code's correct. The pitot heat's on and the landing light's on as well. lining up with the runway and then we'll check that the DI and compass are aligned with the runway as well. Here we move the engines to full power, check the temperatures and pressures, anticipate the right rudder needed and we'll rotate at 72 knots with the aim to climb 100 knots. Once we have insufficient runway and a positive rate of climb, we'll move the landing gear to the up position, which you can see I did there, and the lights have gone out that I just checked. 300 feet will complete our g fells check, so that's that the gear is up and fixed. The flaps are up, engine T's and P's are in the green. Landing lights on or off if we were leaving the circuit, and that the speed is trimmed for 100 knots. Climb straight ahead to 600 feet of the circuit at Shoreham, just because of the helicopter circuit below. And we'll make a left turn 90 degrees to the runway onto our crosswind before we turn downwind. So here we are on the downwind leg. I've sped up the footage a little bit just because otherwise it's going to drag. The uh, video is going to be long enough as it is, just because there was quite a few approaches. What we'll do is this one was a normal circuit, so we'll complete our downwind checks when we're sort of in line with the threshold. 
for that we use the sort of acronym BUMFLITCH, which is brakes are off, undercarriage down and fixed, which you can see I've done, and we've got three greens. In the Piper it was uh, mixtures, masters, mags, but in this we just checked that the engine masters are on any circuit breakers. Fuel is on and sufficient. Landing lights on, which it already is as we're in the circuit. Instruments are in the green, so the T's and P's are in the green. And then that the canopy and harnesses are secure. This aircraft cruises in the circuit at about 120 knots, so uh, we were catching up to the Cessna that was doing about 85 in front of us, which is why we had to make this orbit at the end of downwind, just for some spacing. Rolling out now. So we'll cruise with both engines in the circuit about 55% power, 55% load. And then as we turn onto base, apologies, once we put the gear down, we'll increase that power. And then as we turn onto base, hold the attitude, reduce the power down to about 20% load, introduce the first stage of flaps, and then descend on base at 100 knots, aiming to turn final at six to 700 feet, which should take us onto the pappies. As you can see here, on final now, aiming for two reds and two whites, on the pappies and on final we'll fly at 90 knots and we'll introduce the landing flap which produces a very very large amount of drag at approximately 210 feet which is also our asymmetric committal height asymmetric committal height So there we go, landing flaps in. Aim to cross the threshold and land about 76 knots. Reducing the throttles to idle. And into the flare. Full power and the instructor will do the flaps for me. Again, rotate at about 72 knots. Once you've got a positive rate and insufficient runway, gear up. And then we'll begin the climb out. Now this is where we did uh, the, or the instructor, my instructor Tom introduced the first simulated engine failure. So we do that at not below 300 feet. So once I've completed the, the G-Fails checks, so gear, flaps, engine, landing light and speed. You can see he's got his chart ready there on the climb out. It will close one of the throttles gently. And as you see the aircraft will swing with the yaw and there as one of the throttles is reduced below 20% load the gear is not down so the aircraft automatically produces a gear warning uh, sound which is that beeping you can hear. And the drills for this is control the aircraft full power on both engines, obviously not on the engine that he's closed, which is why he had it covered. Gear up, flap up. Controlling the aircraft, aiming to claim at our 82 knots, which is our best rate of climb. Single engine. Once the aircraft is stable and we've got control, climbing at that speed, making sure that we are climbing, can uh, then confirm which engine is the dead engine. So we use the phrase dead leg dead engine. So as you can see here, the uh, left leg is doing all the work. So I'd say that my right leg is dead as it's doing nothing. Right engine, suspect engine failure, right engine confirmed. And we confirm that by closing the right engine throttle. Once we've closed the right engine throttle, we then can turn the right engine master off, the right engine alternator and the right engine fuel. We only do touch drills below 3000 feet, but as I turn the engine master off, that would feather the prop. But as I touch the engine master to essentially turn it off with the touch drills, the instructor will increase the power on that engine um, to about 16 to 20%, which will basically simulate zero thrust and the, the engine is feathered, which makes the aircraft a lot easier to control. Climb straight ahead to a thousand feet, or one thousand one hundred feet. Sorry, the circuit I assure him. So it's a very uh, long circuit. 
fly quite out of the ATZ. And then the circuit this day was actually quite busy, so we had to uh, keep a really good lookout when we were joining back into the normal circuit, as there were actually two other aircraft that took off behind us and then cut in, just because we uh, left the ATZ. As we come back, we do the uh, bum flitch checks again, the downwind checks, but we'll defer the landing gear until the end of downwind. When we're cruising in the circuit single engine, we'll be on about 85% load, and that will give us a decent speed in the circuit of about 110 to 120 knots. Here we are, end of downwind, landing gear down. As the landing gear goes down, you have to increase the power slightly again. Turning left onto base. All the speeds are the same. Aiming to descend on base at 100 knots, and then final at 90 knots. Now this is where we really have to take in consideration our asymmetrical, asymmetric committal height as well. So we're not allowed to go uh, go around below 210 feet, or that's 200 feet above the aerodrome elevation, so Shoreham is 7 feet, so we just take 210, and that is announced through the aircraft through our headsets. comes up saying minimums, as you can see on the approach here. And if we were happy to go around for some reason or there was a, a, an obstruction on the runway so a deer ran out in front of us or an aircraft pulled out onto the runway when we were below this height we are committed to land because there would not be the performance to climb away on a single engine so we'd have to aim for a sort of the centre of the airfield or, or something like that but you are committed to land so here we are go around full power now on this one I actually made the mistake of thinking to myself, oh, full power. And normally you'd put in a lot of right rudder to combat the yaw. But on this one, I went full power on the left engine, which was the live engine, and still accidentally put in a little bit of right rudder to combat the yaw. Obviously the left engine is producing a massive amount of right, uh, right yaw anyway, so that's why it swung quite a lot, but I quickly realised that and uh, corrected. On the go around immediately, gear up, flap up. Climbing at 82 knots. Again, straight ahead to circuit height, 1,100 feet. And then we do the same again. Keeping a really good look out for traffic. Lockdown has been lifted uh, on general aviation now as well. So the circuit was extremely busy as this was the uh, one of the first fair weather days that we'd had recently. So the, the circuit was extremely busy. So again on this circuit we do a normal circuit, well sorry, an extended upwind, normal crosswind and then obviously downwind back in to join the normal circuit keeping a good eye from the left aircraft that would be in the normal circuit or aircraft joining crosswind into the circuit as well. Downwind checks. Again, landing gear deferred, checking the fuel there, making sure it's sufficient. One engine in the circuit, about 85% power, gives us our cruising speed. Landing gear down, increase the power to account for the drag and the yaw. Left turn onto base. Reducing the power again. Introducing the first stage of flaps and descending at 100 knots. Again, same as before, aiming to turn onto final at between six and 700 feet and then adjust with the pappies. 
what I found with this aircraft is you really have to anticipate that turn and turn a lot earlier than the wood uh, in a, a smaller aircraft such as the Piper. It's got a much uh, larger turning radius and with the single engine as well, especially on the live engine being on the inside in the direction of turn, it's, it's trying to resist that turn so it takes a lot longer to get round. As you can see on a few of these I uh, slightly overshot the runway and had to collect, correct on the way on the way down. Here we are again, approaching about 400 feet, asymmetric committal. So you go around. Full power on the live engine. Against the yaw, much better that time, I didn't put the wrong rudder in. <laughs> gear up, flap up. As you can hear the gear warning horn there because one of the uh, Throttles is just below 20% and also the landing gear is up. Climbing out, same as before. Keeping an eye on the traffic. As you can hear, or as you can see, sorry, in the captain's brief, I was talking about if we were to have an engine failure after takeoff that the best area would be the beach as you can see it's very close to the airfield and just off the coast there would probably be the best place to ditch if we for some reason didn't have a climb performance or a dual engine failure or something like that that would be the uh, the best and the safest place to go I also had to be prompted uh, on a few of these circuits by Tom when once I'd done the asymmetric checks so engine failure for example um, so that was on the first one and uh, I believe this next circuit is a touch and go is once you've done the checks and you've secured the aircraft you've completed all of your checks shut down or simulated shutting down the engine you've got yourself ready you have to ask do we have a fire and then simulate your pan call if there is no fire or a mayday call if you have Again, sped up the footage here just to make it a little bit quicker. And this was my last flight before my CPL mocks. So I've just had an email through today. Today is the 11th of December and I've got an email through today saying that my test has been booked in for the 18th and I'll be completing that with one of the examiners at FTA. Um, both our chief flying instructor and head of training are examiners. I've transferred my medical and my exam passes over to the Irish authority and due to Brexit I'll be doing my flying exam um, or my flying tests with them as well so hopefully I'll be issued or I will be issued with a an Irish license, an EASA license just because of the uncertainty that was surrounding Brexit. Okay, end of downwind here, gear down, again turning in, descending at 100 knots. I also uh, was struggling to descend on uh, final at 90 knots, I was coming in a little bit too fast which was uh, due to me not closing the throttles or reducing the throttle on the live engine early enough. Once I was on the glide uh, slope on the pappies, I was just following it down but not reducing that power enough, which meant the speed was increasing. But that's something that I definitely uh, learnt from this lesson and will make sure I do in the future. Okay, here we are, finals again for runway 20 on the approach. Just passing through 500 feet. Trying to keep that 90 knots. Okay, confirming that we've got three greens, centralizing the rudder trim as well because we don't want that off when we're doing a touch and go. Asymmetric committal coming up. Landing flap goes in. Huge amount of drag. 
slows the aircraft right down, reducing both throttles to idle as one was set to zero thrust. Touch and go. Instructor does the flaps. Full power. Combat the yaw. That's full power on both engines because we'd never do a touch and go with single engine. And on this takeoff, again, once we're above 300 feet, Tom will simulate a engine failure on one of the engines. G fails checks. Gears up. Flaps up. The engine T's and P's in the green, landing light remains on for the circuit and speed to trim for 100. So then Tom's now closing the throttle on one of the engines. You'll hear the gear warning horn. So I then simulate full power gear up, flap up, control the aircraft, get it climbing at 82 knots. And it looks like on this one that left leg is dead leg. Yep, so left leg, dead leg. Close the left throttle to confirm that it's the left engine that's dead. Left engine confirmed, left engine master, left engine confirmed, left alternator, left engine confirmed, left fuel off. Do we have a fire? And then climb straight ahead to circuit height and trim while simulating a pan call. Once you're in the air and you're trimmed with one engine set to 85% in the sort of cruise for the single engine, it's, it's actually extremely easy to fly. Turns are a bit weird as even when you're turning left, you still need the right rudder. When you're turning right, you need some... It's, it's very strange, the feeling of turning, and you have to keep a good eye on the, uh, the balance ball. As with that single engine, the thrust line and obviously the drag on the other engine is completely different. So we've got the radio call, downwind checks. Obviously, again, landing gear deferred till the end of downwind. Want to keep as much drag off as we possibly can. Turn left onto base. 100 knots and final at 90 knots. On most of these I was within sort of five knots of the approach speed, however uh, on one of these circuits the, the speed just wasn't stable at all so we went around very early, I'm unsure which one it was.
might have been the previous circuit. Oh, no, it was this one. So yeah, I just couldn't get the speed stable at all. Again, I didn't reduce that power early enough. I was way too fast. And then when I was trying to sort out the speed, I didn't reduce the throttle enough, which took me too high off the glide slope. And when you've got one engine, you simulate it's asymmetric. It's always best to just go around, especially if you're not 100% confident on the landing. So we went around very early on that one. Climbed to the circuit height. And I believe we did an early left turn on this one as well as we hit circuit height very quickly. And there was also another twin approaching from the west off to the right there. Yeah, so this turn happened a lot quicker than the other ones did. This was more of a normal circuit, especially because we went around at uh, about sort of four or five hundred feet. We had that extra height and speed um, that just took us back up to circuit height a lot quicker. Yeah, a little bit wide, but uh, other than that, pretty much a normal circuit. So here we are again, 85% load on the live engine. About 110 knots in the circuit. And I believe there was two aircraft ahead of us in this one. So we did extend or downwind a little bit just to give a bit of extra spacing as there was two aircraft in front of us who were also landing and this circuit was to land. Landing gear down. Make sure we're checking the speed before we operate either the flaps or the landing gear. I made sure I turned a little bit earlier on this one just to make sure I was lined up with the runway properly rather than overshooting. So that was a bit of a slower turn. I started a little bit earlier just to make sure I came onto the centre line rather than having to correct. We do our grap checks, so gear down and fix, check three greens. Runway is clear and rudder trim is central. Approach is stable, so we've got two whites, two reds, and on the correct speed, and permission for landing is granted. If anything was not on that checklist completed below or at 210 feet, again, we'd have to go around. So approaching asymmetric committal, committed landing, landing flap in. And the threshold speed is 76 knots, which is very close or quite close to the stalling speed. So as you uh, flare and sort of float down the runway a little bit, sometimes the stall warner does activate. But and that was another thing I found with this aircraft that it's quite uh, it's quite heavy. So the the inertia carried forward, you need quite a lot of braking, or you need to start braking a lot earlier than the the Piper on the PA28, where you could brake relatively late and sort of keep essentially driving it down the runway and then brake brake later on this you have to gently squeeze on the brakes straight away I hope this has helped so that was a good flight guys um, lots of circuits very busy in the circuit today as well so it's quite challenging um, but that's my last lesson sort of before my CPL mocks so my next two flights of CPL mocks and then the real thing hopefully um, yeah really good fun uh, the asymmetric flying isn't as hard as I thought it was going to be 
Uh, once you've got it all trimmed out, it's not really much different to flying normally, just slightly different processes. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, if you like the video, drop it a like below. Subscribe to the channel and then uh, I'll film the mocks as well. And then there'll be a lot more footage to come for the IR because I've still got the same amount of flying as I've already done. So like 90 hours just for the IR. So uh, hopefully I'll get those all recorded and put up as well. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.